The best way to punish your opponent for neglecting development and grabbing pawns is to play romantic chess. Namely, finish your development as soon as possible, activate the pieces and carry out a decisive attack. And that's exactly what the great Estonian Grandmaster Paul Keres did in this game. On move 10, his opponent, William Winter, was already 3 pawns up. However, while Winter was grabbing the pawns, Keres finished his development and his pieces were ready to start a direct attack on the enemy king, which was still stuck in the center. And on move 19, the game was over. Keres started with e4 and Winter played the Sicilian defense. And after knight f3, Winter opted for a rare variation, a Nimtsovich variation. Knight f6 e5, knight d5, and knight c3, attacking the black knight. The black knight has made two moves, as you see, while the white knight has made only one move. That's why it's not so good for black to capture on c3, because black would lose a tempo, and besides that, open the dark squared bishop's diagonal. That's why after knight c3, black played e6, defending his knight. And Keres exchanged on d5 and played d4. Now, of course, capturing on d4 would be bad for black, because of simple queen takes d4, and there is no way black can defend the pawn on d5. Besides that, the d7 pawn would be isolated and weak, and its defense would be problematic. That's why after d4, black played d6. And Keres made a strong move, bishop g5, developing his piece with tempo attacking the black queen, and it turns out that black cannot make a natural move, bishop e7, developing the bishop and defending the queen, because that would simply lose a pawn after the exchange of the bishops, white would simply capture on c5, and no matter which pawn black captures, that would be followed by queen takes d5, and white would simply be a pawn up. That's why after bishop g5, as the queen is under attack, black played queen a5 check. And Keres played c3. And now black starts grabbing the pawns. First, c takes d. Of course, Keres could have captured on d4 with his queen, but that would let black develop the knight with tempo, knight c6, attacking the queen. And Keres didn't want to uh, allow that. That's why he starts playing in a gambit style. He starts playing romantic chess. He just leaves his pawn on c3 under attack, ignores this threat, and develops his pieces. Bishop d3. Now, white pieces are developed, while black pieces aren't developed, and black king is still in the center. And besides developing the bishop by playing bishop d3, Keres also prepares the short castle, after which the rook from f1 would move to e1 and exert very unpleasant pressure on the black king, which is stuck in the center. So, black accepts the challenge and accepts the sacrifice of the second pawn. D takes C, which is actually quite dangerous. Instead, probably it would make sense to play knight C6 to start thinking about the development. But black captures the second pawn. And Keres continues his gambit style play and castles kingside. And if the previous captures on d4 and c3 were simply risky and dangerous, black's next move is a serious mistake, after which his position becomes critical. Now it was time to start thinking about the development finally. Knight c6 would have been the right move. And after rook e1, for example, develop the second piece, bishop e6, and uh, in this case Keres uh, probably would have captured on c3, returning one of the sacrificed pawns, and uh, white would have a strong initiative for the sacrificed pawn. But still black could have held this position. But instead of this, black captures the third pawn, c takes b. But black captures this pawn with tempo, attacking the rook. And Keres moves his rook, rook b1. And now white is threatening to capture on d6 and open the e-file, which would be very unpleasant for black. That's why black captures on e5 himself. And of course Keres captures with his knight. And now comes a final decisive mistake by black. Instead of bishop e6 developing the pieces of the queen side and closing the e-file, um, still, after this, uh, white would be much better, after rook e1, for example, but still black could have continued the resistance. Instead of this, instead of bishop e6, black played bishop d6. 
However, this mistake is understandable because this move comes with tempo, the bishop is attacking the knight, and also black needs only one move to castle kingside and ensure a relative safety of his king. And considering this, considering the fact that black needs only one move to castle kingside, I offer you to pause the video and find Keras's next move. So Keras didn't let black castle kingside and sacrifices his knight. Knight takes f7. And this is actually a double attack. That's why black must accept the sacrifice. So black captured the knight. But now queen h5 check. As you see, the queen and both bishops and potentially the rook participate in the attack while the pieces aren't developed. And that means black simply doesn't have enough defensive resources. So if the king moves to e6, then simply bishop f5 check. And after king takes f5, at least white can immediately win the queen by playing bishop d2 check with discovered check and black is losing the queen. If king g8, then simply queen e8 check. And after bishop f8, simply queen takes c8 and black is completely paralyzed. The pieces cannot move. The bishop is pinned. The knight is also pinned as the rook would fall. Besides that, white is threatening checkmate in one. Or if king f8, then simply rook e1, threatening simply checkmate on e8 and if bishop d7 defending e8 square then simply rook e3 creating deadly threats to the black king that's why after queen h5 check black played g6 but now a simple tactics of course bishop takes g6 check and after h takes g the rook falls queen takes h8 besides that white is threatening to capture on c8 and also queen f6 check is very unpleasant so in order to parry the first threat, black plays bishop f5. But now rook e1, cutting the black king on the e-file. And again, threatening checkmate in two moves. Queen h7 check, and after king f8, bishop h6 checkmate. That's why black played bishop e4, closing the e-file. However, now Keres sacrifices the exchange. Rook takes e4, and after d takes e, queen f6 check. So now, if king moves to e8, then simply checkmate in two moves would follow. If king moves to g8, then queen takes g6 check. If the king moves to the corner, then of course checkmate in one. And if to f8, then with tempo, white would eliminate the bishop, queen takes d6 check, and that would lead to checkmate. For example, if king g8, then simply bishop f6, threatening deadly queen g7 checkmate and there is nothing black can do or if king g6 then again a beautiful checkmate would follow in this case that's why after queen f6 check black resigned and now i recommend watching karl schlechter's immortal game in which he sacrificed both of his rooks both bishops and the knight in order to punish his opponent for greediness but first don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe as it's really helpful for the channel growth